quite weird because people like to do this when they talk. I'm talking to you, so I'm going to do this all the time because it helps me to communicate. But if you're autistic and they're trying to talk words and you've got this going on in front of you, all you're going to care about is the moving hand. So gestures, I suppose, if possible, if you're just talking to someone with autism, just minimise it. Minimise gesturing. Minimise gestures. I mean, like in a discussion base, like when you're talking, you talk with your hands. I do it, I'm dreadful, I'm so full of energy. That's, that's just minimise gesturing, as in talk, as in what I mean by that is talk with hands. When you're talking, don't be like this, just kind of, if you have to put your hands in pockets, do it. Go, yeah, so we're going to do this, okay, yeah, it's fine. Nice and calm, yeah, everything fine. No, yeah, so what we'll do today, guys, is do this. Woo, yeah, woo, yeah. Too much information going to the brain because your hands are flopping around. The good thing with gestures for someone on the spectrum is that there are a lot of cues, like unwritten, invisible cues, I suppose, to us, that are difficult to see on a regular basis, socially and communicatively. There are cues that we see, like eye contact one and things like that. There are loads of social cues that we miss, and gestures is a good way to enforce those. So, like, for example, if you want someone, if, you, if, if, people, if like, everybody's moving, like, to go somewhere, someone with autism may not think to move at all. So, if you just go up to them and say, come on, like that, come on, this way, brilliant, it's a cue. S simple, easy, and also, like, if they're in a room, and you're on the other side of the room, you can look at them, just be like, so that's what I do with kids. I look at them and I like, or that, I go that, that, or that, and they can just do either one. And if they like that, I go, okay, what's your, why? I go, why? I'm like, I might go up to them, or that. I'll definitely approach them with there. Uh, if they like that, I'm like, yeah, good man, and stuff like that. Simple things like that. So just gestures, they need to say simple. I suppose a good one for primary is them um, picture cards, those little cards that helps you see, the children see like what you want them to do, or they can use them to help to communicate to you. They look at it, but they can't, it's, they can't sort of, their brain is processing it in a much slower way, and it kind of might, and it creates anxiety because you're like, oh, I don't know how to put it. Ah! So creating simple gestures for them when they need things as well is really good. And then build on that, because you can't just expect them to like do things, to like just go for the whole of their life and give, show people pictures. Because when they're a bit older, it's not going to necessarily work in the mainstream world. Children come up to me and they ask me questions. And I take the questions really literally to help them with communication. Because obviously I work with children in who are like older, so they're in school. It's a primary school age up to year four, because there's three tier. So like a kid comes up to me and the only one is, can I have a toilet please? And I said, yeah, sure, here you go. And he says, no, I need to go to the toilet. So I said, what do you say then? And they go, right, then, then I'll go, then you say, can I go to the toilet, please? And then they'll repeat that back, and I'll say, off you go. And that helps them to reinforce the correct questions to ask at the right point. A lot of the time, it's memory, isn't it? A lot of things can be done. If you just say how it should be done, someone with autism may be able to transfer that, not as a way to communicate, but as a memory and a thought pattern and process, like a routine. Does that make sense? <laughs> Posture. A lot of people with autism may just flip about or they might be stood up really straight they, and, or they might have a, sometimes they say they, have, they can have a funny walk like they kind of wobble a bit or something because of their proprioception, their body awareness or the balance and God knows what. If we've got a lack of body awareness we're not sure about what our bodies are doing which means our posture could be all over the shop, sat weird publicly, mum's like don't do that, don't do that. I'm like, I'm like, what? Don't do what? It's because you're sat weird. And I goes, no, I'm not. I goes, yeah, you are. Because I've, because I've just done it and it doesn't feel weird. Because I've just done things and I'm not aware that I'm doing it. Like, why we, why someone thinks we're weird. And it, that's what, and that creates anxiety. Because we're like, why do they think we're weird? Why do they think we're weird? I think a lot of postures about how we're not aware of ourselves. So we come across differently in our postures. And also, I suppose we, posture can be linked with body language. So we may misread a lot of people in a certain way. This is probably going to be the most interesting part of this video. Personal experience. This helps us because if we, if something happens to us, become, when something happens to you and it's in the past, it can become a memory, yeah? Personal experience and memories can be used to help people with the theory of mind. 
Now, this is how I've taught myself to get around it. Because I've obviously got more life experience than a 16 year old at school, because I live on my own, I've done this, I've done that, blah, 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 whatever. Personal experience creates a memory, which then we can empathise. If we know how something feels when it's happened to us, then we can hopefully, eventually, as we keep, teach ourselves to, so we can relate to other people. So like, I'm a real thing, major thing is, if you don't like something, don't do it to somebody else. That's one of my biggest things. And that's probably me autism. Because I because I hate hypocrites. I hate it. If you say something and you go against it, you're a hypocrite. And, that's the, and that is one of the things that snaps me off people instantly. Instantly. I hate it. You cannot. I remember, I remember almost everything. It's freakish. If you're at school and you're a teacher or a, or a TA or a pastoral care. Pastoral care. You need to be able to help the aspect or autistic draw from their personal experience to empathise with other people in certain situations. Because children make mistakes all the time. People make mistakes all the time. And the only way you're going to stop the mistakes from happening over and over is allowing the children, people to learn from the mistakes, which is fine. You know, you, know, you need to get them to learn. So if a child on the spectrum does something, right, okay, let me just think. Somebody of autism will do something. Oh, he looks quite sinister there. So we'll put autistic there. Autistic person may take um, little Jimmy's car. So Yasby, he's got a little car. There it is, beautiful drawing. And he goes, he looks at it, and now he's got the he's got the car. Which then makes this one uh, cry. And he goes over to Mr. Teacher. He's got his glasses on. Right, and he says, he stole my car. Yeah? So, there's an issue. Snatched his car, took his car, because he's misunderstood the situation. Okay, not because he's horrible, because he's misunderstood. The Aspie... The teacher says to him, how would you like it if he took your car and played with it? The Aspie would then go, I actually don't mind. I don't mind. Oh, it wouldn't bother me. He goes, really? It wouldn't bother you? He goes, no, I'd let him play with it. And because the Aspie's okay with somebody else doing what he did, then, it's okay, then he thinks it's okay for him to do. And that's where theory of mind and personal experience can be difficult. So, am I making sense? I really hope I am because this video is very complicated. We'll leave that one for the comments because I think this video is going to spark a lot of discussions because I feel like this is something that I need, when I talk about it, I need somebody else there to reply. So hopefully this sparks quite a discussion on the YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching these two videos put together. It's been absolutely great doing videos like this. I love the fact that I can just do a long video, split it in half, and share it and spread it out a bit more because obviously I'm not very well. It's not 100%. And also it's really cool because I think it can create more discussion to allow people to look at the look, come back and look again. And it just and it helps us to create a much bigger community, much bigger community, but also a much bigger community that constantly returns to us and shares us their, their, their experiences, which is what we need really. So the only way you're going to learn is through your personal experience. Thank you so much for all your support. Thanks for everything. I love doing these videos and I love doing all videos for you guys. Thanks again and bye.